Next we are going to look at shear stresses in thin wall sections ok. So till now we have been looking at shear stresses in thick wall sections. So now we look at shear stress in thin walled sections ok. So now let us look at this I section which is thin walled which is subjected to some bending moment ok, varying bending moment along the axis of the beam ok. Then what happens is uh, I have this I section which is subject to varying bending moment along the axis of the beam. So there will be a shear force also in the sections ok. Now let me cut this I section using a plane as shown there. Now if I cut that what happens is I expose this surface. Now for this section to be in equilibrium which is of length delta x, I have a compressive stress of sigma xx coming at this phase and there is a stress of sigma xx plus dou sigma xx by dou x into delta x on this surface ok. So this stress is more than this stress. So there should be an shear stress acting along the cut surface in this direction ok and ends there should be a complementary shear coming acting on this flange in this direction on this side of the web ok. This is a complementary shear this is the actual shear stress that is acting on this section to maintain equilibrium ok. Now to compute this shear stress the expression remains the same this Vq by Ib except that now the B would be the thickness of this flange ok and your area that you have to consider should be taken from this end to the section point where you are interested in finding the uh, shear stress ok. So you have to take the entire flange thickness area rather than sectioning the flange along a plane which is cut along the parallel to the xz plane ok. Now you are cutting a plane parallel to the uh, yz plane ok that is you are cutting a plane like this and not horizontally you are having a vertical plane of cut rather than horizontal plane of cut ok. Another point to understand here is at the bottom flange you have tensile stresses coming in here. So if this tensile stress is more than the tensile stress acting on the other surface acting on this surface that the shear stress should act like this along this direction rather than the direction that it was acting in the top flange ok and then the complementary shear would act like this rather than in the direction that is shown in the top flange rather than the direction that it was acting in the top flange ok. And then if you see together the sigma xz stress that is a flow like from here it comes here transforms into sigma xy and then flows on to sigma xz there similarly it comes here goes to sigma xy and becomes sigma xz there. Okay. So, this is called as a shear flow in thin walled sections ok. Basically the, the shear stresses arise to maintain equilibrium of the sections when there is a varying bending moment ok. It is not necessary that always this varying bending moment should produce only sigma xy shear stress. You can produce even sigma xz shear stress ok as we see here ok. But the expression to compute these shear stresses are the same ok. So, now let us go ahead and compute the shear stress distribution for this I section ok. As before let us assume that uh, the thickness of the flange is let us assume that the thickness of the flange is Tf and the depth of the web is H Tf, the thickness of the web is Tw, the width of the flange is Bf both top and bottom the same with Bf ok. Now to compute this stress sigma xz I have to cut a plane let me cut a plane like this ok. Now the area that I have to look up here is this area to compute the shear stress at that location ok. So, what is that area? That area would be let us assume that I am measuring 
S from this end that is locating the section from the uh, left extreme of the flange ok. So, I have sigma x z given by v y by i z z by b now is the thickness of the flange T f ok and uh, the area would be S into T f ok into the center of that area. The center of this area is somewhere here that will be H by 2 plus T f by 2 right ok. So, this becomes V y by I z z into H plus T f into S by 2 ok. So, now what happens when S is 0 the shear stress is 0 as it should be because I am not applying any shear on the outer surface of the flange ok and hence the variation of the shear stress along the flange is going to be something like this. it is going to be something like this it varies from 0 varies linearly up to there. When h is B f by 2 I will have the maximum shear stress which is sigma x z max at s equal to B f by 2 is tau 1 which is V y by I z z into B f into h plus T f by 4 ok. So, that will be tau 1 there and on this surface you can continue s because the direction is changing ok. So, what happens is uh, uh, this will decrease like this again I have to take a s from this section. I will take a s from this section move on here this will become s 2 ok and I have to compute the variation like that ok. Now, how do you assume this s is a question you have to assume s such that it is for the along the same direction as the shear flow ok. Now, same direction or opposite to the direction of the shear flow, but it cannot cross it, it, it cannot be continuous across sections where the shear flow changes its direction ok. It should be against the shear flow direction or in the shear flow direction ok. In both these cases I am assuming it to be against the shear flow direction ok, but I cannot go from against the shear flow direction to a direction where it is along the shear flow direction ok. So, that will be the variation of tau sigma x y on the top flange a similar expression will obtain for the bottom flange also. So, the bottom flange also there will be a variation which is like this it is the same thing as we saw for the thick wall sections and this will be tau 1 this value is going to be tau 1 ok. Now, let us see what happens in the web ok. Now, we are interested in finding what is the variation in the web. The variation in the web is similar to what we had for a thick walled cross section ok. So, since it is similar to a thick walled cross section you will have sigma x y is that direction of that shear stress ok that is again given by V y by I z z into y s into a s divided by the thickness of the web because that is the b ok. And when I am looking at the web I have to consider the entire flange area and a portion of the web area ok. That is similar to the expression that we obtained here it is similar to the expression that we obtained here for the web right. The same area I have to consider for the web hence the equations will remain similar as what we obtained here ok. So, let us go ahead and plot that 
resulting equation. So, what happens it at the web flange interface there is some shear stress which is non zero okay and then at the neutral axis location is where the maximum shear stress occurs okay and that maximum shear stress is same as what we had before okay this will be nothing but as we saw here that will that will be v y by i z z into t f b f by t w into t f into h plus t f by 2 is going to be i z z into b f by t w h plus t f by 2. into T f okay. and the maximum shear stress is going to be and this is tau max that is going to be V y by I z z into B f by T w into H plus T f by 2 into T f plus H square by 4. Okay. Okay. So, that is going to be your tau max same as before. Okay. So, now let us understand where this variation in the shear stress profiles is important. Okay. 